party people welcome to the channel today we're gonna to do something a little bit different got the bikes loaded up and I'm ready to go all right we made it to the spot and got a prime parking spot here I'm just gonna grab a few wheel chocks to put up under the wheels there and uh, we'll get started all right let's see just in case Uh, we have some, uh, let's see, some natural features out here, um, complements of the, uh, the high waters from the hurricane. And I can also tell you this, man, the mosquitoes post-hurricane have been outrageous. All right, guys, so today I'm going to give you some tips about learning how to wheelie. And this is just from my own personal journey and what I've learned over time. And I must warn you, this video is going to diverge from conventional wisdom at some point in time. This is just my personal opinion and how I learned to wheelie. Um, I'll post some footage of me wheeling uh, my first bike, which was a uh, 2015 Santa Cruz Chameleon and uh, then also a 2015 Santa Cruz 5010. A V1, so one hardtail, one full suspension bike. So I proved that. All right, so here's how I'm going to break this down. First, I'm going to talk about bike setup and what you should do before you actually get on the bike and actual practice the wheelie. Second, what you should be doing while you're practicing the wheelie, and thirdly what you should do after you practice the wheelie. All right, number one for what you should do before you actually even get on the bike is make sure you have some hard sole shoes on. All right, so you wanna have a good hard sole shoe. I've got my uh, 510 shoes on here. They have a very thick and hard rubber sole. This will help reduce the stress on your foot over time. And again, you're gonna be practicing for hours and hours, day after day. So we wanna really reduce the amount of stress we place on our feet. Say no to something like this or tennis shoes that have very flexible soles. All right, number two on my list, have a working rear brake. And that means both a well-positioned lever and a working brake pad. And so let's take a look at what I'm talking about when I say well-positioned brake. So we're in the good old US of A here. Um, and so our rear brake is on the right side. And what I'm talking about here of well-positioned brake, I'm talking about set your bike up for one finger braking. So notice I have three fingers wrapped around the grip, one finger where I can actually grab the, um, the the highest leverage point of the rear brake lever, which is right on the end, um, that will allow me the finest modulation with just one finger and reduce the likelihood that I grab a bunch of brake with three or four fingers. Um, so we're gonna use and build our muscle memory and muscle control in our pointer finger only. Uh, for those of you in other countries where the brake's on the other, that would be on your left hand. All right. Here's where we break from conventional wisdom. Number three, have your seat lower than your handlebars. As a matter of fact, I would say lower your seat as much as you can possibly stand. So instead of having a setup like this where your seat is, um, in this case, much higher than my handlebars, we're gonna opt out for a lower seat position. For example, this seat position is almost equal with the handlebars or even a bit lower than the handlebars there is a center of mass of the bike. And if you have a high seat and you're sitting on this with your hips and your legs and your core of your body, any input you make on a high seat will greatly impact the left and left to right stability of the bike. So in order to reduce that, we wanna get our body weight closer to the center mass of the bike. If we have a seat in this position, which is at or lower than our handlebars, we're definitely closer to the center of mass of our bike, i.e. center of gravity. And any inputs on from your body on this seat will have less of an impact on the left and right stability of the bike. Okay, number five on our list of things to do before you start practicing the wheelie. Get a full suspension bike. Yes, that's right. There is not a hardtail out here today and I will tell you my reasoning behind that. And this is just my opinion. 
Now, you can certainly practice on a hardtail, and if all you have is a hardtail, that's great. If you're used to riding trail bikes a lot, I would suggest you start out on a full suspension bike. At some point when you get the front wheel up into the air, you are sitting at sag or below sag in the stroke of that rear shock. And this is a very comfortable position. Those of you that can already wheelie on a full suspension bike, you know what I mean. It feels like the bike just kind of sits down in a slot and your weight is just suspended there. Um, any inputs from the ground or unevenness will actually get absorbed by the shock and not vibrate up through the frame therefore impacting your left and right stability. All right, so number five on my things to do before you actually even get on the bike to wheelie is we are going to learn how to wheelie at a medium to fast pace, and that means no slow wheeling. And we do this because the gyroscopic rotation of the wheels at a medium pace are advantageous to keeping your stability in a straight line, therefore um, having less of an impact of the left to right stability of the bike. We're gonna learn how to use the ERB method, then CRB method, herb to curb. And the ERB method is engage your rear brake all the time, and as you get comfortable, disengage your rear brake and just cover. Okay, number six on my list of things to do before you actually start practicing the wheelie on the bike. Set an artificial constraint. We do this in the business world all the time. And it just helps you get in the mindset. And that mindset that we wanna set is, is that we're not gonna bail out and flip over backwards. We're gonna find our balance point and never are we gonna flip over backwards. Now, whether or not that is true in nature or not depends on how well you practice. I practiced and never flipped over once that I didn't want to. Um, and, but I set that artificial constraint to allow me to work to that goal. And so going into this, I knew that I was not gonna allow the bike to flip over backwards. So my suggestion would be don't practice bailing out. Um, if you wanna bail out one time just to see if you can do it, go ahead and prove to yourself that you can. I don't think it's necessary. I think it's an innate reflex in human beings. If you go over your balance point and you start to fall off that bike, I guarantee you, your brain is gonna tell yourself to throw your legs out and catch you. Just like dropping a cat upside down, he's probably gonna land on his feet, right? I believe that is truly the case um, for human beings as well. So I don't waste a whole lot of time practicing bailing out. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna talk about how to actually practice doing the wheelie and talk you through it as I ride the bike. Typically, what I like to do is start out in a fairly low gear, but a high enough gear so you'll get a little bit of speed up. Remember, we're gonna wheelie at a medium speed. So obviously, we're gonna start out with our dominant foot. This is my dominant foot. This is gonna be our power foot. All of the motion here is in your feet. Do not use your arms. Do not preload the fork. None of these are necessary to actually do a wheelie. You have plenty of strength in your leg to initiate that along with the weight transfer to the back because you're gonna have almost nearly extended arms, right? You're gonna have a slight bend in your elbow. All of these things are gonna allow you to initiate and actually get to a balance point to wheelie eventually. So if you find yourself bending your elbows and trying to pull up on the bars. Take note of that and be mindful of that. We're gonna initiate the action with our feet and as we have slightly bent elbows, that is gonna allow us to shift our weight back as we bring the front wheel up. And so all of, our, all of what our arms are doing at this point is just connecting us to the handlebars. We're not yanking up on the bar. We're not preloading and then yanking up on the bar. I guarantee you, your legs have plenty enough power to actually bring the front wheel up on this bike or any bike if you use the method of transferring your weight over the rear tire and only using your arms for connectivity. This is gonna give you the most stable wheelie from left to right and also get you to your balance point the fastest. I'm using my one finger braking um, we're going to use the ERB to CRB method or herb to curb. So to begin with, we're going to initiate the wheelie with the brake actually on. We're going to find that initial bite point of the brake pad onto the rotor and we're going to hold it there. And we're just going to pedal against that with our dominant foot and keep our arms 
with a slight bend, transfer our weight back, and we're just gonna bring the wheel off the ground for a little bit, and we're just gonna practice this. And you can feel it. If you, if you have too much on the brake, it'll be very difficult to get your, your back wheel up. So all you're doing here is building your trust into your braking system along with initiating that muscle memory of connecting your finger motion with the balance point of the bike. And so just keep doing that till you find that balance point, initiate with your dominant foot and shift your, your weight back. And as you get more comfortable, let off on the brake a little bit and just keep doing that. This may take you 30 minutes. It may take you one hour to get comfortable. It may take you two or three weeks to get comfortable. But if you're marching toward your goal, that's where you want to be. So get comfortable with the herb to curb method, meaning engage your rear brake initially and let off as you gain more trust and re-engage that brake if you feel like you're moving beyond your balance point. That's what we call cover your rear brake, right? So could practice engaging that brake and pedaling against that brake and building your trust and confidence in your braking system that it will not allow you to go over if you grab enough brake. Modulation points will differ based on different braking systems. You will, Shimano, it bites really quickly and it's almost full, full braking power as soon as it bites, whereas SRAM is a little bit more modulation. You'll have to modulate the lever a bit in order for it to bite harder. So just keep those things in mind. Now, once you build your confidence, right, you start wanting to, to develop some speed. So we're gonna develop a good pedaling speed here and we're just gonna start lifting against the brake. And we're just start lifting against the brake. And that's all you wanna do is just develop that trust that you're not going over because you're on your, you're engaging your brake and you're only letting go. And when you get enough confidence or if you're moving past your balance point, you're gonna re-engage that brake. And it's okay if you don't get the wheel off the ground high to the balance point initially. Also, as you're practicing that and you start to develop your confidence, start taking note of where your head is. Your head should be pointing straight in front of you or slightly tilted up. The more you tilt your head up, the actually easier it is to transfer your weight over the, uh, the center of the rear wheel. Uh, and um, you know, the body follows the head. So wherever your head goes, your body's gonna go there too. And just continue to do that and build your confidence. Soon what you'll find is you'll get more and more confident as you get closer to your balance point. You will start being able to develop the muscle memory around the rear brake control and the balance points. Now, the other thing is, is that once you, um, if, once you get up, so let's say you start to get the front wheel up and you've noticed that the bike seems to feel heavier on one side versus the other side. And this is very common. A lot of times what happens um, is because of the position of your legs and your knees and your hips. Um, one leg may be further out, therefore you have more weight off the center of gravity of the bike in one direction or the other. Some of it has to do with flexibility. I had a problem with this when I first started because of an old hip injury. Um, my left leg is not as flexible as my right leg and my right leg would hang off like this and my left leg would be closer to the bike and so my bike would track to the right side and every bike i got on it felt like the bike was heavier on the right side and once i got initiated into the wheelie it would start to pull me this way and i would have to counter with weight on the left side of actually bringing my knee out and so the important point i'm trying to stress here is that actually stretching after these rides to help equalize how much flexibility you have in your hips and your legs um, also helps not just to mention it helps with the with the soreness after um, because you're you're kind of slowly getting the lactic acid out of your muscles but um, keep that in mind as well now the other thing I would say is notice that we're gonna be at going at a medium speed my seat is actually around the height of my handlebars I actually could probably go a little bit lower and I do that with my dropper post and just cover my brake and I'm still practicing. Be cognizant of where you're throwing your weight and just let your, your hands go. 
and modulate that brake as you need. I guarantee you won't flip over if you keep your finger on that brake, keep the brake engaged, only let it out enough until you get up to your balance point and then cover it. All right, as we're doing that, there's another point I wanna make. Again, I wanna stress, there is no movement in mountain biking that starts off good with pulling up on the handlebars. It's usually a leg thing or bottom bracket, weight centered on the bottom bracket. Um, unless you're going over a jump and you're in the air, you can turn the handlebars and pull up on the handlebars all you want. But most movements do not get initiated through a pull of the handlebars. Remember, it's a dominant foot power stroke and a shift of weight toward the back. Again, some of the conventional wisdom here I diverge from because I think it helped me when I was learning to wheelie. Um, you know, the seat further that lower down than being high, start on a full suspension bike, um, start at a, a faster, start learning at a faster pace. All of these things will help you with your left to right stability, which a lot of times is what people are battling against. Um, it, you know, once you get your front wheel up, it's a matter of um, how you can balance not only up and down, but left and right. And a lot of times left and right overrules anything you're trying to learn for the up and down and you're just concentrating on just trying to keep it straight. So those things will help you get better at the left to right stability. Now, as you start getting further and further along in your progression, uh, you need to start thinking about how you gonna actually steer the bike. And that can be done through the knees it can be done through turning the wheel. My advice to anyone that is just starting to learn the wheelie is to use your knees. Um, that is gonna give you the most effective movement and impact as you're learning the wheelie. Then once you, uh, once you get control of actually turning the bike with your knees, um, then you can start turning the handlebars. All right, so I'm gonna ride a few wheelies here just to show you what I'm talking about and how I'm modulating the brake. The other thing too, is you progress, you can start adding in coaster wheelies where you're just balancing, there's no pedaling. Um, you can you know, add uh, this, uh, all of the skills that you learn here transfer a little bit to your balance points, transfer to a manual obviously with a coaster wheelie uh, and a whole uh, uh, slew of other tricks. So notice my arms, I'm almost straight right now and I'm leaning back and forth with my knees I got my finger on my brake, and I can actually hear it scrubbing on my pad, and I'm going downhill. Now, sometimes it's easier to do a wheelie uphill. Um, you can practice both up and down. See how I started then? I didn't pull the, the front wheel up all at once. I just rode into it. Notice everything is a shift in weight and a power pedal. It's not me yanking on the handlebars. I'm just leaning back. And at that point, you can also start practicing the coaster wheelie. Once you get up to your balance point, just let it, let it coast. And just kind of play around and finesse it. Start steering. Coast downhill. All right, so here's some things to think about after you practice a wheelie, and do this every day that you practice the wheelie. Number one, you should stretch your legs and stretch your whole body after you practice the wheelie. You're gonna build up a lot of tension in your quads, in your calves, in your feet, in your legs, and in your core in general, and you need to get that um, lactic acid out of your muscles, and it's gonna help you have more coordination, stability on the bike in the future. So every time you practice the wheelie, make sure you take 10 to 15 minutes afterwards to stretch your body out. All right, the other thing you wanna think about after you practice the wheelie is, is that Look, you're not gonna practice every day, all day. You're gonna pick some time. For example, I picked about four hours a week, an hour a day for four days straight. Do that for about two weeks and then take a week off. Um, your muscle is building the fibers and the muscle memory to actually develop the coordination to do the wheelie. So your finger working in conjunction with the input of your legs and your balance, um, all of these things need to be built. And if you're practicing all the time, they won't have an opportunity to. So I'll challenge you with this. Take a week off after two weeks of practice, come back and you'll be amazed at how much progress you've actually made. 
to that point now you have developed some new balance capabilities so you can apply this uh, on your everyday rides on the trails or if you're just out riding with your buddies whatever um, you can start to kind of apply it to manuals you can start learning coaster wheelies so as you start to pick up these skills try it uh, in different areas on different terrain that'll help you develop the skill even more all right guys you know what to do if you haven't subscribed already click the subscribe button click one of those thumbs down there up or down i don't care either one just let me know you're there make a comment what tips have helped you learn how to wheelie or are you struggling where are you struggling in learning the wheelie you guys know what to do as always get up and ride